journey.
seated it's a great pleasure for me to be able to welcome all of you to the ISI IGC uh, annual seminar um, 
A lot of you have been here before and you're pretty much used to the drill and, and what gets presented. But I just thought that I would mention that, uh, you know, we do go through a cycle. And that cycle is that the projects that are funded by IGC are begun. And usually the first seminar is presenting work in progress. And indeed, I think what you'll find is a lot of the presentations that will be made during the next two days will be in the nature of work in progress, um, which in a sense places greater demands upon the audience because they're then expected to, to actually contribute to the, the future development of that research project. The second one usually are completed projects, um, which means that uh, the audience is then expected to soak in the wisdom of the research already done. Um, so let's say that this is the trailer to the next event that we will have where a lot of these projects, the final version, which would include, I think, a lot of inputs from you, would, would be placed before you again. And so with these words, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you again and to have Jonathan Leap, who is the executive director for IGC, to come and say a few words. Thanks very much, uh, Pranab, and let me add my um, welcome to his. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, it's my first time uh, in Delhi, and uh, the India Central program here is one of the centerpieces of the IGC. It is the single largest program uh, in the IGC, and in many ways has been a sort of pioneer in helping us to explore and develop uh, the model of the IGC. And I wanted just to take a few minutes now at the beginning to take a step back and share with you uh, what we think uh, the IGC is all about in the sort of motivation for the International Growth Center. The aim of the IGC is to bring research and policy closer together in the service of promoting sustainable growth. Too often, research and policy proceed in isolation, and there's some pretty good reasons for that. Research and policy have different time frames. Policymakers want results yesterday, and researchers can deliver it two years from now. Uh, but also, there, there tends to be a sense that the focus of research, the frontier of our knowledge, doesn't overlap very much with uh, the policy challenges that face uh, policymakers. Well, fundamentally, the IGC challenges that notion that there isn't that kind of overlap, that the IGC really seeks to generate, to bridge this gap between researchers and policymakers in order to generate new ideas for growth. Fundamentally, the IGC is based on the, on the, uh, the recognition that <clears throat> to solve growth problems, it's not enough just to bring in ideas from elsewhere. Knowledge exchange or knowledge translation are not enough to provide effective solutions to growth challenges, that what is needed is knowledge creation, which is just another way of saying that there are many unanswered questions uh, underlying policy challenges, and that many of these are fundamental questions that require new research. So that this perceived distance or lack of overlap between frontier research and policy is, in our view, uh, an illusion that actually undermining many of the most important policy challenges are research challenges, are, are challenges that will really, when we investigate them, push the frontier of what we understand, push the frontier of our knowledge. So that's the first point about the IGC, and that is that it's based on the idea that frontier research is necessary for effective growth policy. The second idea that underlines the, I, the IGC is that knowledge creation is most effective in this domain <clears throat> when researchers and policymakers come together and engage in dialogue. Not at the end of the process, not in a sort of presentation of a finished report, but actually right at the beginning of the process and then straight through. Why at the beginning of the process? 
Well, at the beginning of the process, because neither researchers, no matter how committed, nor policymakers are in a position to identify the crucial underlying research questions uh, that relate to policy challenges. It's only when the two come together, it's only when researchers and policymakers come together that it's possible to identify the crucial, the crucial research questions that need to be addressed. So at the heart of the IGC, and this is the second point, is a model of co-generation of knowledge. That is that we shouldn't be looking to policymakers and, and researchers to proceed on their own, uh, on their own paths and to be, generating, uh, to be generating ideas or knowledge independently, but rather to bring them together and to, to try to foster a process whereby new ideas are generated together by policymakers uh, and researchers. The third point about the IGC is that if you want to make that work, you need to have sustained engagement. Someone once described to me the, the, the uh, behavior of many researchers as the mosquito model. They sort of fly in, suck the bud, and fly out. Uh, and I think the, the IGC is very much meant as an antidote uh, to that. That is, the IGC has developed a model which brings together global and national networks of the top researchers in growth and development with a set of 15 permanent, in our view, country programs. That is a long-run engagement that enables our country programs here in India, led by uh, Pranab and uh, Professor uh, Mukherjee, uh, that develop the local knowledge and the local networks that make it possible to bring researchers and policy makers together, that bring down the cost of engagement for the researcher by giving a sort of base from which uh, they can start, but likewise for the policymaker, by developing a reputation as this program has for for policy engagement, for policy relevance, that then makes it easier to engage policymakers in that process of bringing researchers and policymakers together. So it's really in this way that the IGC seeks to make a difference, that the IGC seeks to create new ideas for growth by fostering a model of co-generation that is based on dialogue, not at the end, but at the beginning and during uh, research projects. And one of the nice things about uh, being here is just to share uh, with you the many examples of this happening in this uh, program. And historically, the program here has been strong in this kind of engagement, and I think will continue to uh, develop. So uh, whether it's uh, the study that Michael Greenstone and uh, colleagues Esther and Rohini Pandey did with the Gujarat Pollution Board, or whether it's Ashok's uh, work in Maharashtra, uh, on NREGA or uh, whether it's the project on PDS delivery in the, in the Punjab. There are lots of examples of direct engagement with government and that's very much at the heart of what the IGC uh, is all about. So with that note, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here but also to be here with you. Thank you. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, you have uh, heard both Dr. Pranam Sen and uh, Dr. Jonathan Lee speak about first the intent of uh, the <coughs> conference and the bigger picture of, uh, um, of IGC and what uh, its purposes are. Um, so now we are in, uh, just going to begin the first session of, the, um, of this conference on uh, development policy. And the session is titled Environment, Energy, Urbanization and Infrastructure. Um, we have uh, three speakers in this session. The first half of the session will be uh, devoted to, uh, I think we are going to first connect uh, with Professor Shapiro uh, from Princeton, I believe. And uh, <clears throat> so he will speak and then Sam will continue. Um, <clears throat> so the, the first uh, 
speaker will, uh, the first set of speakers will uh, do their presentation and then we will have uh, Dr. Chawla speak about, uh, discuss the paper and we'll have a round for the audience to raise questions. Uh, and the uh, speakers will respond. But before we open uh, it up to the speakers, let me very quickly tell you about the speakers. Uh, professor Shapiro is Assistant Professor of Politics and International Affairs at Princeton University, and he co-directs the Empirical Studies of Conflict Project. Um, his uh, active research includes uh, political violence, economic and political development in conflict zones, security policy, and urban conflict. Uh, he holds a PhD degree from uh, the Political Science Department of Stanford University. Uh, and to my right, uh, we have uh, Sam Stolper, and he is a doctoral candidate in public policy at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. And his research interests are in environment and energy economics and <coughs> policy. Um, and we have uh, on my left, uh, Mr. Chawla. Uh, he is current the Joint Secretary from the Department of Expenditure Minister.